<laughs> literally on brand for me. These are the ones that I use every day when I'm on stage. So okay. Jessica, let's read through the instructions. Let's do this together. Let's do it together and then you can read us. Okay. And you let us know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's up, mi gente? It's your girl, Glorelis. What's up? Jessica here, and it's another episode. So, of Girl, Let Me Tell You. Let's go. So, Jessica, they got me out here glammed up in Hollywood. I feel like I'm changing. I see that. Yeah. I see that, girl. I see that sunglasses. Thank Hollywood's you. changed you. I'm, I'm wearing color. Lie. Remember I used to wear black all the time? I, I yeah. saw that you switched it up today. Yeah. I, I don't know. LA just makes me happy. I just feel good. I feel like you're definitely glowing. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> also, I did want to point out, we don't have our girl, Ivana, right now. I because know. she's doing big things in Hollywood as yes. well. She's Everybody, in a movie let's or something. Let's clap it up for Ivana. Ivana. Yeah, she's going to be in a movie. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah hopefully we can go count. to the red carpet. I'm down. Yeah, because she said she was going to invite us as plus ones because she said something about girlfriends sticking together forever. Ooh, she yeah. said that. Yeah, I, that's what I heard in the, girl, in the Friends episode. Well, I'm excited <laughs> for that. Also, we're making it big time over here on yeah. the pod because we have our first sponsor, man. Big Let's shout out to go. Tampa. Clap, clap really loud. Clap, put, put sound effects, all that stuff. <laughs> I'm excited to get really into talking about some intimate things in this episode. I know. On, yeah. Honestly, probably the most vulnerable I'll ever be like yeah. on the internet because it is yeah. it is vulnerable. But I think it's also something that's important to talk about because especially when we were younger and we didn't have the internet to like yeah. go on there and like Google certain things and you're so uncomfortable right. and unsure of yourself. It's yeah. it's tough. So I, I would have liked to hear something yeah. like this. I gotta talk about everything on the internet. So maybe I should have <laughs> a filter. Do, huh? I do. Yeah, I talk so about open. my friends, everybody. So it's gonna be a great. It's gonna be great. But speaking of which, yeah. how have you been, girl? Like, I'm, how's your comedy? I know you're taking Hollywood by storm honestly, over here. Comedy's been going really well. Really developing my set more and more. I feel like moving to LA has really helped me see the world a little bit. Lar I feel like when you live in one area, you just see that area. Like a bubble. So like, I'm like, oh, New York is New York is the greatest city in the world. And I come over here, I'm like, oh my God, I have so much more to learn. Yeah. So many other, I'm learning about my Latinidad on this podcast. So that's yeah. been really helpful to my art. So yeah, what's, what about you? I heard you were in Texas in your favorite place. <laughs> Yeah, are we gonna? Is, would you ever? Would you place. ever get a Texas ID? Like, because I've been thinking. Oh. Like, I'm thinking. Like, am I gonna switch my New York State ID for California? Are you, or is that something? You, I, I haven't even thought about. Something I feel like, like that. I'm betraying. I feel like I'm committing. Like, I'm tra I'm betraying my people. But I feel like you're so bi I don't even think you'd have to do that. I have like, to, if I moved to Texas, yeah. I feel like I'd be like super. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I I, would you do it? I don't know if I would move to Texas. I don't know. Yeah. It just depends on so much. But I did go to Texas. Yeah. I was somebody's plus one for a wedding. Oh, let's go. Yeah. We need to have wedding. We have wedding bells effects. I don't know. Yeah, I went to two. Yeah. yeah, I went to two weddings in two weeks, y'all. Let me tell you, it's definitely made me feel. I like love weddings. Were they open bar? Open. Oh yeah. Okay. Did open you meet anybody? Bar. Did you? <laughs> The, yeah. um, well, I went as someone's date. Okay, cute. Yeah, and he was awesome, super yeah. respectful, super. Did he um, open sweet. the door for you? Every single time. Okay, he's approved. Yeah, I like every that. single time. Did you, did you get his sign? I think he's a Taurus. Oh, that could work. Taurus are Taurus are really good people. <laughs> they could be a little stubborn. Okay, so what's the negative sides to me dating a Taurus? Um, I want to know that. Honestly, I don't know if this episode is for that. <laughs> they could be. Yeah, Taurus people they're just really stubborn. Okay. But the, is there, are okay, there any Tauruses okay. in here? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're a Taurus. Are you stubborn? Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Well, but that. they have really good taste okay. in food and like in like okay. lifestyle. So I Oh, I, like, I love his lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. I love just the cowboy lifestyle. Y'all yeah. know that. We know that. Make sure that we keep the recurring cowboy shoe running in every episode. Um we but yeah, I'm excited shoes. to welcome our guest today. I personally, if I could, I wish I had someone like this in my life every single day so I could text them and blow up their phone every time I get a question. So today we have an OBGYN, a mama of three, Dr. Erica Montes in the house. Let's hey. make some noise. And I am excited. Not only is she, you know, she's a doctor, she's a Latina. I think it's so dope to see someone in that position, but I'm excited to bombard her with all of my questions, all the questions. about the V word. Today we're going to be talking about vagina. 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 Let's say it like 10 times. Vagina, vagina, vagina. Vagina, <laughs> vagina, vagina, <laughs> vagina. So everyone can feel, because I, I feel comfortable with my vagina and I want everyone to feel comfortable with their vaginas as well. I love that. I love it's that. all about being comfortable out here. Because yeah. let's be honest, it's not always the most comfortable thing all yeah. the time because we grew up with that. Like, I don't right. want to say shame, but just like, ooh, like, are yeah. you going to talk about it with your mom? So we're excited yeah. to have her on. And yeah, we have tons of questions. So yeah, let's get into that. It's a great, it's going to be a great day. Anything else we want to say? I think we, we captured everything, right? We miss Ivana. Another, another, we're going to put up this, um, this is sparkling water. Oh yeah. On behalf of Cheers. Ivana. I think it's about Cheers on behalf of 
vaginas. Yeah. And vaginas and Ivana, which rhymes. Ivana, vagina. <laughs> yeah. Does it? Yeah, is that, so she's still Ivana, part of the episode. Ivana has yeah. been vaginas. Here we go. <laughs> what? I'm just saying, look, I'm a comedian. I notice everything. Um, so right. yeah, do we want to bring on our guests? Yeah, let's bring her on out. Do we want to put, do we want to like drop a beat? I don't have no beats. Let's go. Hey. Hey, yo, I'm so off. We're so offbeat. Yes. All right, you guys. So like we said, we're going to be talking about everything vaginas, every type of question you guys had with Dr. Erica Montes when we come back. I'm Let's excited. Go. Vaginas. Woo! Hi. So we're here with Dr. Erica Montes. Thank you for being here today. I'm so excited to have you, Jessica. Yeah, sorry, girl. we are so excited to have you. Welcome. I'm a Gemini. Ladies. I make everything by myself, but we're working on that. <laughs> So, first question we're going to start. I took AP Bio, but I didn't do so yeah. well. But it was still AP Bio. Okay. What does OBGYN stand for? Oh. So, OBGYN stands for obstetrician and gynecologist. So, we obstetricians are ones that deliver babies, and gynecologists are people that look at vaginas all day. Oh, so, you do both? Yeah. Okay. I do, well, I used to do both, but now I'm just beca- now I'm just a gynecologist. Okay. That's so yeah. interesting. Like, I just want to know, just to get a little bit of, like, your background and why you got so passionate mm-hmm about this obviously to do anything in the medical field you have to be passionate you know how much like studying you need to do my brother's a doctor and it's crazy the dedication why vaginas on your end why were you like this is my passion this is what I want to do yeah you know um I actually was able to shadow uh OBGYN when I was in high school and I just really liked that interaction I really was interested in the conditions that he was treating and that he was managing and it was awesome to bring a new wor- world into the, a new baby into the world. So oh. I kind of just went with it and it, it kind of s- fit my personality. Was, was your first time, did you see the baby? Like, did you see that process? Yeah, so he oh, let wow. me, so he let me deliver the placenta. I okay. couldn't touch the baby, but I delivered the placenta. And, um, and oh then kind of as things evolved, I just knew that that, that was my calling. And, and being a Latina, there's not many Latina OBGYNs in the world. So yeah. I thought, well, hey, why not Why not do it and just kind of represent? Yeah. I want to ask one question Thank before, because we're going to bombard you. I have a lot of yeah. questions. I'm excited. I, yeah. I always have questions for my guy. No, I've been going to her forever, and I still have new questions. <laughs> and I know Jessica has questions. Yeah. I just want to know, are you the first mm-hmm. doctor in your family? I am. You do? Okay, yeah. dope. We yeah. need to drop some first oh, some bombs. First Let's go. First I love that. Okay, so I have a question okay. for you, though. Oh, for me? Wait, yeah. okay. I'm okay. nervous. I want to know, like, okay, because yeah. I feel like every girl goes through this kind of, like, situation. Yeah. The first time that you ever like looked at yourself down there I mean like truly okay. looked at yourself down there right like you're be, like okay wait a minute I'm a little bit curious right, right now so I'm gonna be on you know I'm always honest I feel like there have been moments where I look but now that I'm in my 30s I'm like I look regularly like really I have a I have like a mirror you, lady yeah I'm like you know what let me just see what's happening like I should know what my vagina looks like right but so I took a mirror I have like a separate mirror where I just kind of like after I take a shower I just kind of like See every what's, time yeah like i just want to see what's happening because I'm, I'm a hypochondriac so i want to make sure that like i think it's important that you're really in tune with your body so like with every part of my body i'm like okay this feels this is what i normally see because mm-hmm. i don't i guess i don't know what normal is right or like that could, we can talk about that later but i'm like yeah this is what i feel comfortable so if something ever goes wrong yeah. i'm like this is exactly what i'm gonna tell my dog i have like a whole note dedicated like right this came up this came up what is this what is like i'm annoying that's I'm perfect like, <laughs> we love wow, that yeah that's good yeah, what I mean, about if you, you don't know your normal, then yeah. you don't know what's abnormal, right? Right. That's so I'm so like, true. but I do look at it. I'm like, I'm happy that I'm talking to you because I'm like, I want to know what's like, what, what is it like? It's supposed to be like a V. Like, I want to talk about all that today. <laughs> it sounds yeah. true. What it, what it, because you know, I, I, I just feel like it looks like a you or whatever. I'm just OD, <laughs> like, I, I overthink everything, yeah. but I want to know when did you see your vagina for the first time? Well, okay, well, obviously like our whole eyes, but really, really look at it. Yeah. Oh my God, I don't even remember, but I do remember watching a show. I think it might've been Sex in the City mm-hmm. in high school. Mm-hmm. And I remember they were like, you need to look at it. You mm-hmm. haven't looked at it. I remember they had that yeah. whole conversation and I was like, oh, like I haven't really sat there and like, looked at it yeah it's almost like you feel the first time i did it i felt so weird i was like am i doing this like is this weird that i'm doing this but you know 
Yeah, probably like I, high school, if yeah, I had I just, to guess. I feel like at this point, I'm like, this is just part of like growing mm-hmm. up. I'm like, I need to, I don't want to go to the doctor and be like, I want to be able to be like, hey, I know my body. For sure. And I want you to let me know, like, are we on the same page about it? I, I feel like it's like a journey. Like, yeah, you know, it is. it's loving yourself is in like, it's internal, but it's also like physical. And like, that's up yeah. to you how you decide right. to do that. Yeah, but so it's true. time to bombard Dr. Erica Montes <laughs> with all the questions. <laughs> also, like, I just want to say, if I was a doctor, I would have it like on my license plate and like, I would have like a, a whole necklace. Like okay. I'm just obnoxious. Okay. Do you, what, do, do you, you want to put like a vulva, would, like a vulva a, chin, oh, like yeah. a little vulva? I would have like a little vagina yeah. chin. Yeah, that like, might be. That might. Maybe you can oh make me God. one. Do you? I. You know. Let's uh, let's get on one of these stores and make <laughs> one. I don't have a lot of, you, you say you like to build things. I well, I try to build things. Okay. Yeah. I <laughs> we, can, we can give our guests <laughs> gifts. We will make you a okay. vagina necklace. Okay. I would appreciate that. Or like maybe like buy it. But do you like in your office? Do you have like vagina like pictures of vagina? I just. I no, I mean, I mean, yes, that we have posters and we have mm-hmm. like a model where I show patients like, you know, this is this is the uterus, the ovaries, the vagina, the cervix. Um, and then, of course, we have our mirrors there, too. Mm-hmm. It's not a vagina mirror, okay. what we call. You should but make one. I, I think should. we talked. So, yeah, yeah, I think we should, too. Like, I think we're going to have to get in. Like, vagina sticks. Yeah, okay. I think yeah. so. Yeah, okay. so we're, we might have to think about that. But, yeah, we yeah. do have mirrors that are readily available so we can show patients kind of what's happening down okay. there. I, yeah. I have a question. Do Because I feel like um, sometimes we get embarrassed about asking these questions. Yeah. Like, should we be embarrassed about not sometimes knowing like what the labia, I didn't even know I'm saying it right, the labia, the, labia, right. the yeah. vulva, like can you tell, like it's three parts, right? Is it three parts? So, See, I'm learning too and I'm in my 30s. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of, a lot of, you know, people get the vulva and the labia confused because they actually are different, mm. different anatomical areas. So the vulva is, is something more like, the mons, which is the area that has the hair or not. And mm. then there's the labia majora, the labia minora, and the clitoris. Um, yeah. And then, but then the vagina is just the internal canal. Okay. Okay, so that's oh, kind the of the canal. difference. Because some people yes. say, call everything Thank down there you. the okay. vagina. Yes. Just kind of right. Like Encompass That's it literally what I was doing up until this episode. Okay. But Sorry. technically, the, outside, the is... outside is the vulva and the inside is the vagina. Okay. It's, it's that okay. easy. And I have so, a question yeah. also. Okay, so and this I'm asking this for my younger yourself because Mm -hmm. you know starting your period is obviously something that is it can be like very vulnerable especially like okay I'm just gonna be honest like being a Latina like it's not something that I would talk to my mom about I don't Mm -hmm. know about you if your mom ever prepared you for that I knew it was coming right because they did they did teach it to you in school but when it happens you're like oh my goodness like what do I use am I using a a pad a tampon like what would be the best option for me so I guess my question is like what what are the like normal ages that girls typically start their period Mm -hmm. like for instance like when did you start your period i started my period at 12. at 12. yeah and i was really lucky to get my period with my mom in the vicinity so i was was in my favorite retail store uh, (laughs) (laughs) and i was actually trying on clothes and i'm like i think i got my period and I was—I guess I was like, like you said, like in my younger, I was like excited because you know when you're young, like you were excited. I was excited because I knew that it meant mm-hmm. something to people. I don't know. Right. Again, I was wow. younger, but I was just like, oh my god, like this is it. This is what we were talking about. So I told <laughs> my here. mom, yeah, you said you couldn't. Everybody's different. So I yeah. was just excited. I was like, yo, mom, like I think I got it, and I was excited to like tell her. I think, um, and we could talk about like the process, like after that, like you know what my mm-hmm. family taught me about like you know what to use or what not to use. Um, my aunt was really like a, the most like I feel more comfortable talking to my aunt like yo like I don't know what I'm doing and she taught me like how to take care of yourself after your aunt did your mom did yeah it for well the I part. just I just didn't you know we talk about this it's like, hard we had so a, it was hard. a different it's really time. hard it's I mean, so hard yeah I mean I have a lot of a lot of patients who who are Latinas who yeah. say you know we never talked about it it was always hush hush I mean like for me for example I I got mine I think I got my period when I was probably like 11 or 12 mm-hmm. also. And I thought like something bad happened to me because I didn't, yeah. I oh, had, no had no idea because oh. my mom never talked to me really? about it either. But I think the times are changing and like people are throwing like period parties now oh, and things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know, so, have you heard of those? I would no, so but a period party. I'm cool with talking to it with my, I would not want a period party, I think, would look, you? I, yeah, I, At like 12 or 13, <laughs> honestly, I would not. I'd be like, like <laughs> lock me in my room, nobody talks At 30, to me. Um, if there's a situation yeah. where I got my period, I will be having a party. Okay, I'm like, 30. <laughs> At like 50, I'll be like, yeah. yes. You know, and I'm, like, I'm celebrating today. So normal is like, I mean, I have some, I've heard as young as eight, 
some some girls yeah. are getting it as young as eight and then yeah up to about yeah probably like 13 15 14, is a 15. little later maybe but 14, maybe no. average is like 12 to about 14 is yeah. kind of that range yeah. yeah and then i remember like when i had first gotten mine it wasn't even like i was anywhere i was just came home from school and then i just noticed i was like okay there's like a stain and i was like now what like now what am i supposed to do like i was not happy i was not like this is the uh, start just, of something uh, new i was, I was so like I was, please yeah. why why is this happening i was to me? like one step closer <laughs> out the house i just wanted to get out of my house so i you know i and i love that we started this journey and like i feel like we're becoming closer and closer and, yeah. this, and we're getting real close on this episode so i want to know when was the first time you used a tampon okay that's a good question because i always was uh, because i didn't come to my mom i didn't really mm -hmm. like tell her i was so like in a sense ashamed yeah i just went i just knew where my mom's pads were and i was like i think this is it's gonna go here mm -hmm. and i'm gonna put this here i was a little scared because i could see why like it seems like it would be intimidating to use yeah. a tampon so i just used pads for a while until i was like you know what i'm over it i'm over yeah. the pads i know it still works for a lot of um people but for me in general i'm just like the tampon always worked best for me. I want to say probably around like 17. I was an yeah. athlete as well. I was like a very intense mm -hmm. soccer player. So oh, I always okay. found that, especially when I was doing soccer tournaments, like a tampon would work so much better for me. So I want to say yeah. like 17. Yeah. It took me a little while for me to like do it, you yeah. know? And I think like try I was it. definitely in college when I tried it. I think I was intimidated at first by the instructions. And like, I, I feel like I probably tried it in high school and I was like, okay, I'm going to try again. When I, because you also have to feel really comfortable with your body. Right. Yeah. So you I guess do. I just wasn't really comfortable with my body at the time. And I think when I got to college, I was like, I want to do something that's a little, for me, was a little bit more efficient. So I just started, I was like, I'm going to dedicate a day and I'm going to try it as many times as possible. I'm going to put my leg on the toilet. I'm going to get this tampon up there. And then ever since, <laughs> no, I'm just saying because I'm on a mission you never today. know. I think like we're talking about, you know, feeling uncomfortable with the vagina and like, Sometimes like you, you're putting something up there. So I'm like, okay, I need to know that this is like, okay, I'm covered. Is like, it safe? And yeah. then, Cause of the myths that you hear about it. Like right, you heard about right. like, I'm sure you, girls come to you all the time with like questions about, hey, like this is something that I heard you lose your virginity if you put, right, does that mean right. like I'm a virgin still? Does it? I know that's what my mom would tell me. She's like, I wanna, well, ask the, the mom, you know, a lot of moms say like, senoritas can't wear tampons because then you won't be a virgin anymore of course yeah. but i think that's part of our culture and those oh. misconceptions but of course not i mean you the it's not that has nothing to do with with you being a virgin or not so no yeah. that's there's not just true so many at all. layers to like it's not like again you have to think about like your family dynamic right and, yeah. right you know your culture like, and we all latinas but we all have like step sometimes a little bit varying cultures like in new york exactly. it was very much like girl you figure that shit out on your own really but it's, yeah like <laughs> I, 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 I'm like, like, girl, like <laughs> i did the whole thing by myself i was like i'm gonna figure that out oh what do you God. do when i guess like when your period mm -hmm. comes around like do you have like any like routine or any like like for me i'm like this is my moment to take a break from the world because <laughs> I no at first I used to just be like kind of like brush it off like okay I have my period but I was like in a lot of pain and like I was like I'm just gonna go to work but I'm like no like I deserve a day to myself and I'm gonna take that day and I'm this day is for me to like really what about on the days where you can't self-care like let's say today like for yeah. instance and you're like cramping like crazy because that's happened to me I mean like I said I was an athlete my whole yeah. life and then apart from that I do hosting and I've had mm -hmm. times where I'm like on camera mm -hmm. on set standing up in a skirt in a dress and it's like oh my goodness like i'm about to start my period mind you yeah. i don't have a regular period and oh, i know that's really? like another discussion yeah. i get and i don't know if this is normal I actually wanted no, to ask you this, this, this question <laughs> <Let's go. go. laughs> i get my period probably once every three months okay and i'll get it for like two or three days and then sometimes okay. I'll feel like no cramps and then other days the cramps are so unbearable I can't even like stand up straight but it's like literally once every like three months and I don't know when I don't know how I so I can never plan I for it I can't play with like, surprises today. like that that's what yeah. I'm saying and when you work in show business <laughs> right. it is not it is not the easiest thing to navigate let me tell you yeah you know I think I think it's important to to realize that periods the average time frame to come is probably going to be like every 21 to like 35 days mm. so your periods are like a little bit more concerning sporadic. and yeah I mean I would yeah. probably check you for a couple of like just some hormone issues just kind of make sure that oh my God. we're not nothing crazy but you know <laughs> just something to to evaluate and then okay. like typical length is like you know three to three to seven days is pretty average and then um flow wise you know anything where you're not changing more than one to two 
tampons an hour is, is safe. Oh, an hour? Oh, I thought yeah. you say day. No, for so, me it's like maybe oh, twice a day. That's fine. Yeah, that's so if you're change if you're changing one to two times an hour, like one every one to two hours, that's not that's safe. Not but if you're like you know like maybe three to five a day is fine. Yeah, yeah I, I usually use like three when I'm on. Like yeah, my that's high typical. Days. I have two questions. What happens when your period days change? Like sometimes it'll come at the fifteenth, and then sometimes at the first. What? Why does it? change yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean it mm. could it could there could be a couple things like sometimes stress, mm. sometimes traveling, just like oh. time zone changes. And then sometimes there could be a little hormone imbalance where your period just doesn't, all the hormones don't synchronize just right mm. that particular cycle and it could just be a little bit later. That's interesting. And what about sinking? Is that like a myth or true? Like we've been hanging out a lot. So are we gonna like <laughs> have could. similar? You could. Okay. I mean, but Is I, that I actually think, a myth? No, I think that, that we tend to see that, but I think that happens more like if you live together, oh, okay. like moms and daughters and sisters yeah, and things. Really? I think, yeah, it's pretty. I wonder pretty, what that's all about. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Anyway, okay, do you want to talk about actually <laughs> <laughs> like gonna... tampons versus pads? Because that's like another thing. And yeah. again, like I'm really I, I'm really excited about this episode just because again, like when I was younger and I didn't have like the resources or internet to go mm -hmm. on to talk about like the differences between using a pad or using a tampon. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to see this. So girl, I want you <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna pull. We're gonna pull. Let's pull it out. Okay, but when here. do you do you have a circumstance? Like for me, when I'm doing my comedy mm -hmm. shows, I prefer to use a tampon because I feel more like, you know, it, it's a me thing. Yeah. I feel more like everything is in its place, and I don't have to because people you don't feel are, like you're wearing a diaper. And it's people are looking yeah, like at people you are from... like they're not even looking. They're right under <laughs> my crotch, and I just want to make sure that I'm like. At, for me, I feel comfortable. You're taking care of. Yeah, because yeah, for yeah. sure. But when I go to sleep, sometimes I'll use like a pad, just, you know, just I'm in a rush or whatever. But you can sleep with tampons, right? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, usually during the day, it's good to try to change them like every four to six hours. Mm -hmm. But overnight, eight hours or so, that's safe. Yeah, follow yeah. the instructions. Have you ever had someone, um, I some, once, I think last year, I went to my gynecologist because I thought that I forgot to take out a tampon. And she went up there and she was like, you're fine, girl. You're Wait, right. you thought you left it yeah, like because all you know, the way up? Is you that know, possible that it goes all the way up? Well, well, it can go pretty high in the vagina, but it's not going to get lost anywhere, okay? Yeah. There, the yeah, cervix, make, make sure. The cervix <laughs> yeah. will, will prevent that. I mean, remember, our vagina is a hole, but it's like a sock. So, yeah. like, one side's open and the other end is It doesn't is go closed. all the way yes, up, Yes, so it yeah. won't end up, okay. like, you know. Oh, my God. I'm like, we got a so brief right. anatomy <laughs> for anyone who didn't do well in AP Bio. Welcome to Girl, let me tell you. I know, I know. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was a rough time in high school. So let's 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 talk. Yeah, about, let me let me see. Yeah, I want to talk about the tampon. You want to read the instructions, Jessica? Okay, it's so yeah. sweet though. It says your first time. Take a deep breath and relax. Let's take oh, a I deep breath. It. So I learned how to insert a tampon on my own, but now that we have a professional in the building, yeah. I kind of want to walk through the process. And we got the good ones here. We got the Tampax Pearl. Jeez, the quality. <laughs> Literally on brand for me. These are the ones that I use every day when I'm on stage. So okay. Jessica, let's read through the instructions. Let's do this together. Well, let's do it together and then you can and read you, us. Okay. And you let us know. Yeah. Right. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so take a deep breath, girl. Okay. More. Relax. Okay, so after okay. you wash your hands, of mm -hmm. course y'all need to wash your hands. Yes. So get into a comfortable position. I feel like that could be whatever you want. Yeah. Be like, you Should know. we I used to put my foot on the toilet. Is that fine? I think that's perfect. Okay. That that helps to like relax your muscles, your pelvic floor muscles. So Are there any other positions that we should? You could consider lying down on your bed, okay. but I mean, okay. it just depends on what, you, what where you're at, what comfort mm. level you have. Okay, okay dope, yeah. dope. All right, so it's e easy from these instructions. Insert the applicator, all right? So it's already it's, in there. It's in there. Okay, so then push the tampon inside, Ooh. remove the inner outer applicator at the same time, and boom. And then this part opens up inside right the so vagina. yeah have right. you seen those videos where they put like a tampon in like a glass of water and it just goes Whoa. oh yeah yeah so like that's the absorbency part of it so when you first mm -hmm. put it in it'll just kind of stay that way and then as the blood kind of trickles out of the cervix then that's when it'll kind of get a little thicker okay and oh, then yeah. when how do we i guess the removal yeah remove this from the vagina throw it out remove oh, it but out? Then to remove that yeah okay so all it says for that is just literally relax mm -hmm. your muscles 
and yeah, and you just take it out. And then the other just thing, pull the string, and yeah. again, yeah. like I'm, I'm re- like I said, I'm really excited about this episode because I feel like a lot of you know, if you're younger out there and you're watching this, or even if you're my age and you're like, yeah. I've been doing it right this whole entire right. time. Right. Something that I always wondered is like, what do you, what do you girls do after? I know I just like you said. I, I think put earlier, toilet you just paper on paper, it. Yeah. Just because like I like if I'm on a vacation or I'm sharing. Sometimes like I'll be on the road and I'll share a room with someone. I just don't know, and I don't want people to know like, oh, I'm on my period or I'm right. my business. But are there any mm-hmm. other ways? How do you do it? I think it's probably best just to to throw it in the trash, in the trash? like not mm-hmm. flush it because you never know as far as like the oh yeah you know how that is for the environment and things. Yeah. So I think uh, I think throwing it in the trash is perfect. Yeah, and so for people also trying to figure out, okay, maybe our pads for me, our tampons mm-hmm. for me. What would you say like would be a, the de- the benefits of having a, a tampon versus a pad? Because I know when I was younger, yeah. I was like. I don't know, like which one's better for me yeah. in my lifestyle. You know, I think I think a tampon is great, especially for someone who's active mm-hmm. or or someone who's an athlete like like you were back mm-hmm. in the day. And I mean, also it's it you know sometimes pads can maybe feel kind of bulky mm-hmm. or you know I think that it just kind of gives you more of like a free feeling where you're not like just kind of feeling like something's down there the whole yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the one of the main things is that we want everyone to feel comfortable with it. And if you, you know, if you're not sure how to do it, always ask like a tia, a mom, a sister, and then you can actually even come. I've actually had patients come to see me in the office to oh, help them put dope. one in. Because maybe, yeah. oh really, to yeah. put one in. To help them, to show them how I to do it. I never thought about wow. that, like asking my you guy would, you, I can't believe you didn't no, ask I, her, I, I, asked, I, I asked her everything, but I was like, you know what, she could help me. You could yeah. go to your OBGYN, you see yeah. her once a year. Or some people multiple times yeah. like hey like i need help with this right yeah i love sure. that yeah, yeah. And, and so like okay so for instance if we're talking about like pads or or no tampons i know there's like different levels that yeah. you see and i know like if you send your boyfriend to go get like tampons or like which one do i get the what are the different levels called well there's large is medium and small yeah. right i think it's i think it's like light oh. and then it's um and then the max one it could be like super absorbent or super yeah but i think it's good to kind of see what your flow like and then you can kind of decide like which one you would want to use and maybe some people would use like the super ones at the beginning of the period and then just kind of trickle down to the light one but please don't use a tampon if you're not on your period there's oh because I think some people Mm. may use them might use them like just for some vaginal discharge or things but that's not safe like for spotting some people spot yeah so i mean i would say just use it when you're on your period yeah because then that can increase the risk of toxic shock syndrome i knew not not wear it on your period but i didn't know people used it for like other things as well well some people yeah yeah so we'll try to bust that myth today and the other thing i had a question on because summer's coming up Mm -hmm. can you like swim in it like i've never actually gone in a pool i've never gone in a pool and I've had like an accident where I'm like, oh my God, there's like red everywhere ever. So <laughs> yeah, is that a thing? Sure. I think I somebody when I was younger, I think I remember when I was younger, somebody did tell me I when you're on your period, nothing's gonna come out. Is that true or is that a myth? No, I, I mean it can still come out, but it is safe to wear tampons when you're swimming. That's yeah. totally fine. That's, I think that's like mm-hmm. something don't hate on my family, but my family said like if you're in water, it stops your period. That's what I think. I, think, told me I mean that just, I think that's Same. a Latina okay. myth. Cause I mean that And they also say don't get in the pool an hour after really eat. Like, I'm like, I'm getting in the pool. <laughs> like yeah but i don't know but yeah. yeah this has been really helpful i feel like i got sometimes like i feel like i'm healing i'm still healing like my inner child i'm getting the answers that i wanted when i was little sure. honestly yeah, yeah. yeah. i yeah. feel like it's just been like years of just doing it and like yeah just dealing with it because i didn't go to anybody for this stuff yeah. when i was younger so i appreciate all. you thank Dr. you Harry. thank you okay. we still need to don't forget we have to get her a vagina necklace Oh yeah. oh yeah, or like a mini, a mini tampon. Or no, a, vo- a vulva. Remember, we're a vo- doing the oh, vulva, the vulva because that's a correct yes. name. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Get it right. I love that. Oh my god. Okay, okay so, so now, we have so many more vagina yeah. questions. Are we? Let <laughs> us know. Like as an OBGYN, do you ever feel like your patients are asking too many questions, or is like you know the more the merrier? I mean, honestly, if it goes with what we're talking about and it's gonna educate them, the more the merrier. It's yeah. fine. Because I have. I have more questions. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, this is something I think every single girl asks themselves, yeah. and it's like, do I look normal down there? I know we kind of talked a little bit yeah. about, do you look at yourself down there? Yeah. Which, I again, do. like, it's a weird experience at first, but I definitely recommend doing it. How do you know if you are normal down there? Or yeah. I think also I've learned mm-hmm. to find that every single woman is different. Like, some 
what are they called? Like labia the go la lower, right. some don't. So there's been there there has been like a big push on social media where they where they show art of different vulvas mm -hmm. and like the labia minora, which are the smaller lips. I think like they said maybe smaller from lips. respondents, like fit, half of half of um, people have labia minoras that hang out, so they're like Audis. Okay, yeah, about half. So I think sometimes when people see their their vulva, they say, "Oh my God, I don't look normal because these lips are hanging out," or or this is you know this is too mm -hmm. dark or this color or not. But I mean honestly, everyone's vulva is unique. It's mm. it's normal. It's beautiful, and so we just have to appreciate you know how ours looks. What's something on the outside? Obviously, we know like okay, maybe some are longer than others. What is something on the outside that just by first glance shouldn't? should not is not normal yeah so you know if you are noticing like lumps or bumps in the in the vulva mm -hmm. like externally anything that itches or burns of course that's not normal yeah. some some sometimes i feel like a lot of people think that if it itches it's a yeast infection but it could be so many other things yeah. so that would be a reason to go get evaluated I for have sure a thing, i have something mm -hmm. i want to bring up i feel like sometimes i have coarser hair because my uh -huh. hair is very yeah. coarse <laughs> so i think women like me with coarser hair sometimes get prone to like ingrown hair right so like what for people that have that anxiety mm. how do you i guess how do you let them know like hey like it's just an ingrown hair yeah. versus I, I got really comfortable so i'm like oh this this shit is getting clogged up right again. i mean but, right it's just it's my <laughs> vagina so i i know it really vulva. well yeah. my vulva vulva see vulva. i'm still learning she get there. She we should have just there. started right. from the beginning we're yeah. talking about vulva vulva today. vulva but i think vagina is kind of an overarching theme for yes. today because it we're because the tampon goes in the mm -hmm. vagina yes right but i think still it's still good to know that difference but yeah. no i mean i think i think if they come in and i and i explain to them like yeah it's just an ingrown hair what mm -hmm. we call folliculitis which folliculitis. is like folliculitis folliculitis there we go i, I have folliculitis <laughs> it's just my hair is really really curly not right. to be up in my business yeah. <laughs> so somebody asked just... i got folliculitis yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Like, Ooh, girl, but it's, okay, it's embarrassing because then i'll like wear a bikini but then like i just because my hair yeah. is really coarse like i yeah. just like I don't want to wear bikinis, so sure. I, just, I just won't put Instagram thirst straps up because of that. <laughs> yeah, I can, that's why yeah. I don't have. I think it's yeah. important to hydrate the skin really mm -hmm. well before you shave. Um, also, you know, make sure that you're using like a new razor almost every mm -hmm. time because really? the dullness of yeah. that of the blade will will kind of cut the hair mm. at a at a different angle Ooh. and then mm. also maybe consider using like shaving cream because that yeah. will hydrate the skin a little bit. But more that won't too. make it become thicker. No, that won't. That's, that's another that's myth. A that's, myth. That's another Latina myth. If you a shave, myth. Like, if you shave, it's, it's going to come back 10 it's times worse. Yeah. That's why I that's haven't shaved my little mustache. Yeah. I have a question. <laughs> Sorry. I have a question. <laughs> She's like, wait a second. It is? Yeah. Yeah. I want to know, do you so do you mm -hmm. recommend waxing versus... Is that lasering. Like, yeah. You know, I think, la la lasering, I think lasering is is actually good yes. because it does that's kill do. the hair follicle. Yeah. Um. So I think that's a excellent option, especially if you're more prone to folliculitis. Yeah. But I, damn, but I keep waxing, that, like, <laughs> like, waxing can, I look at you, you can get. Damn, like, that's you right there. Like, no, I've been I've been sugar waxing and it's been helping out. Like it grows back less now because I'm in my thirties, okay. so like okay. it's not as. I mean, oh, I mean, yeah. waxing can also can lead to folliculitis too. Folliculitis to a extent, yeah. but you know, I think I think you have to kind of try different things yeah. and see what works best. So for laser, you. but I'm afraid. Like, what if it, it hurts? Laser does hurt. Yeah, I, it doesn't I'm hurt a fan that much. Yeah. I mean, what what level are you going? Well, on no, though? I mean it depends on where they're actually. <laughs> it, what it, part of the vulva they're no, doing yeah. on your shins? That's oh no, where it hurts oh, okay. the most. Yeah. But I've okay, down there, I will say on your vulva, it's the least painful. Okay, yeah. yeah. But there's a part anymore. where, oh, okay. like, between, like, all the way at the bottom, that's, like, the most, and actually, the bikini strip area is the most sensitive part, so whenever I get yeah. wax, I'm just, like, baby, yeah. baby, baby, and then it's just, yeah. Well, you can mm. put, you can put, um, like, a numbing cream mm. before, before you, sometimes some OBGYN offices have that that's, like, external, and that will help when you, like, wax or shave yeah, or laser. Well, I would never do it myself. That's one thing. I need, because I will <laughs> stick around with that waxing paper for the rest of my life. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so why do, why? Yeah, is there, what's the purpose of the hair down there? Yeah, you know, that's a that's an interesting question. I think it's more like an evolutionary thing mm -hmm. where like back in the day when, you know, we didn't wear clothes, it maybe was like a protection to the genitals. Yeah. And oh. then it also may be something where like 
mates could see that that person has gone through puberty they mm. could reproduce oh. or something like that it was more like a visual cue so i think it's it's just more of like a historic or evolutionary yeah. thing and i just oh, want to wow. make as, well i just feel like sometimes people can get a little self-conscious about hair down there but i mm -hmm. think it's it's normal yeah. you can do whatever you want exactly like, I feel like I prefer like wax, but some people like do like different like shapes in their vulva landing strip. Yeah, yeah landing strip. I've heard of yeah. a landing strip, yeah. or some people are like, you know what? I am yeah. take me for who I am. Exactly, <laughs> and I want to make sure that nobody <laughs> feels uncomfortable right. about that because right. people will be out here like, no, everyone has separate different preference. Right. Do whatever you want. It's your body. Yeah, yeah. thank you, yeah. thank yeah. you. I just want everyone that's listening to know that you can do whatever you want with your vulva. Right. Because that's the right nice word. Nice lady. Vulva. Nice. <laughs> vulva. 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 Okay, other questions. And this is, I know a lot of, um, you know, people, they get really scared to go to the OBGYN for the mm -hmm. first time because it's like, you mm -hmm. see the movies, you see how they have like one foot here, one foot oh, here, and it's like chained yeah, up yeah. and you're just like talking, hey, so tell me about your Sunday while you're in there doing whatever you're doing. Yeah. Like, so like how, how often should mm -hmm. people go to the OBGYN? And then how old should they be the first time they mm, go to that's the a good question. That's a good question. Yeah, you know, I think overall, often for sure is at least every year because yeah. things can change anywhere on our bodies where we're mm -hmm. examining and things in a year's time. So every year is definitely important. And then as far as age goes, I mean, I'll see, I've seen people as young as 10 or 11 because oh they goodness. are starting to yeah. have like mm. period problems and period okay. issues and so i mean it's really just when you feel like there may be a problem yeah. heavy periods painful periods and then but if you're not having any issues i think around age 14 15 mm. is reasonable yeah. so you can talk about other op other things that are going on or other options that you may need for yeah. birth control and things like that oh, wow. i love going to the gyno do you absolutely baby that's I, her favorite doctor i yeah it's right. my favorite doctor <laughs> up there i dentist other at the bottom but gyno top five nice i would I got, say dentist, gonna... dentist and gyno probably bottom for me yeah just a normal <laughs> doctor wait me, i want to know get my why, heart rate again why are you <laughs> oh, i'd prefer i want to know why are you why are you afraid of the gyno i'm not afraid I just, yeah. it's just one of those like, okay, like here yeah. we go. Like, I, you know, I don't yeah, know. Maybe I need a, I, think I need a you, book an appointment with yeah, you. Yeah, right, no, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's the we're yeah, adding her totally. to the group chat. Honestly, I'm like, yeah. Dr. Er, Dr. Montes, but, <laughs> you know. Oh my God. But yeah. I like going only because I have a lot of, like, um, reproductive history yeah, like, sure. issues in my family. Oh. So I like to make sure that I'm like, okay, is everything fine? I'm, yeah, great. I just want to make sure. being proactive is key. That's yeah. excellent. I love so that. that. That's why I go. Wow. I'm like, y'all not going to catch me Good out here. Good for you. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about another thing that I think we have insecurity mm -hmm. about is our natural vulva vagina order am i saying yeah. that, i think it's vagina because that, that, that's coming from the inside right well yeah, the, it still could yeah. It's, yeah i mean it could be vault, both but yeah yeah, yeah for so sure what what are we supposed to smell like down there oh yeah, yeah. so well i always Good tell question. my patients um your vulva or your vagina should not smell like the inside of a bath and body work store okay oh my that's god one. yeah oh, i did see that post on your yeah. feet okay. yeah. which by the way follow her she's yeah. a, i really lurked on her page influencer <laughs> yeah. and doctor yeah, so no, no peonies no, no okay yeah, no lavender haze all, any of that <laughs> roses chocolate any of that stuff okay. i think um vagina women and vagina owners have kind of turn, used kind of words to describe their their vaginas as like maybe like earthy or mm. ripe or pungent or even like maybe yeah. sour yeah and those i think that is pretty re you know a reasonable way to describe it and kind of like a, a typical way to describe your vagina but now if you do notice that it smells mm -hmm. bad, like one of my patients said, I, my my vagina smells like a dead animal. Then yeah, that's oh. not normal. Obviously, no, sh no shaming, but <laughs> oh my god, me, sorry, no shame, no shame. I was like, okay, lady, well, let's go ahead and check you then. But that's yeah. something that I feel like could be fixed, like or no, with like a shower, or is that something that even with a shower? Yeah. So if if you're noticing that like the odor is there and it smells yeah. like a dead animal after even a after a shower, Something's then wrong. something's wrong. Okay. Right? Something's so, wrong. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So things that kind of can affect. Your, your smell though could be like you know your period obviously yeah. because of the blood and then intercourse because that semen can affect the ph of your yeah, vagina I've heard that, yeah um mm -hmm. and then also kind of like what type of underwear you wear because yes. you wear like polyester and really tight bombs. or silk yeah or silk yeah. like that doesn't let your vulva breathe right so yeah. what kind of underwear do you suggest? so usually just cotton loose fitting yeah loose -fitting sometimes cotton. i sleep without 
without any underwear. That's I heard that, fine. Yeah. Is that yeah, cool? That's okay. Yeah, because yeah. it's supposed to breathe in it. I that's heard it was, fine. Yeah, yeah I'll be out there. Cool. In my own mm. apartment. Thing. Well, don't be, you know what? I should never <laughs> said that. <laughs> I, I also want to say, I think it's really important. This is like a PSA message yeah. to, again, I hope that everyone's listening to our podcast because it's amazing, but don't put the health of your body and like your partner's, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you should do that. Like, be I, your own advocate. I guess I'm trying to say politically correct. Like, don't let somebody else dictate how often you go to the doctor, like, or mm. trust them with everything. Right. There are some things that recur naturally for women. Like, again, yeah. like sometimes the underwear you wear can, or even Genes can cause you to have yeast. Inf- I'd be saying yeast infections. Yeast, yeast infection <laughs> or like wet clothing, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. Like, okay, so I roomed with yeah. two beautiful, yeah, roommates in college, yeah. and they were rowers. And I know, like, they, they're constantly like, you know, in mm-hmm. the water, yeah. in the ocean, and, yeah. and things like that. And they're wearing like these tight suits, which I'm sure didn't help them out. But I, I'm sure that's something that could really affect, you know, getting yeast infections, right? Right. right. Yeah. So like tight, tight clothing, mm-hmm. the type of material you want to avoid anything that's like more like polyester, yeah. so because that doesn't allow the vulva to breathe. Also, um, if you're if you are more active, like in the water, make sure like you take your suit off as soon as you're done, mm-hmm. because just that moist environment increases the risk of infections as well. Yeah. So like in order to cure and, and if anybody's watching, like what's the best way to cure a yeast infection? Yeah. So overall, there are a lot of over the counter medications available for yeast infections. But honestly, some of those infection, uh, some of those medications have ingredients that can be irritating Mm. to the vulva and the vagina so it is probably best to go see your um, doctor or your um, practitioner because if you keep using that that actually may be making your symptoms or your um, infection Mm. worse so not always but I think if especially if you're having recurrent infections you want to kind of get down to the nitty-gritty and figure out like why do I keep having these and because sometimes you could have a yeast that's like resistant to certain medications could it be genetic not really genetics, mm. but sometimes you even think it's a yeast. Remember, everything that itches is not a yeast infection. So you want to re- you want to go in and make sure, like, if I, I think it's a yeast infection, but actually it may be X, Y, or Z. So yeah. that's important, yeah. too. Or, like, I know some people that have, like, recurring UTIs. Like, it's just, like, it just happens a lot for them. So, like, that is that also genetic or that's just, like, no, a No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I mean, unless you actually have, like, an anatomical issue with, like, your that's urethra. That's a big word. Was anatomical Anato- mean? Anatomical is essentially just like you were Time born with the way that oh. your, your 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 body was made. Yes. So like if your urethra, which is your pee hole, has yes. like uh, like it's it was formed in a different way, or you have an issue with like your kidneys or your bladder. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. kidney issue. Yeah, then kidney maybe rocks it or whatever. could be Kidneys genetic, yeah. but I mean it, that's not that it it wouldn't be really common to see a genetic problem for recurrent UTIs. Okay, well, we have like 15 minutes left and I want to talk a little bit more about periods and how do you tra- how do you track your period like what do you do Jessica how do I track my period yeah how do you know when I can't track my period because it comes whenever oh, yeah. it yeah. feels Sorry, like which regular. is so scary it's so scary like I said because I can be anywhere I could be on a run actually I was running a half marathon not that long ago and right in the middle of the oh, half marathon gosh. there it goes and it was awful because I had to like take off and I think every you know every you know buddy can relate to this that has had a period when you get it in the middle of like something whether that's like a gig like you're yeah. on, you're you know you're on on stage, stage or like in the middle of a marathon and you're just like so paranoid you're like am i staying and am i staining something am i you know yeah so yeah i had to like take have, off my shirt yeah. tuck it in the back of my pants and i'm just like this because every step oh, you're just like, gosh. Uh, uh, like it's i have so a question because you know i'm a pedestrian i'm from new york so i walk everywhere and yeah. whenever that happens yeah. Like, I'll just ask anyone walking the street, like, yo, I know that you don't know me, but can you check to see if I'm, you know, if you can oh, see my period? Oh, yeah. But is that, like, something you guys, you ladies do, like, in the West Coast? Because y'all taking cars <laughs> everywhere. Like, I, my homegirls in New York are looking out for me. But, like, oh I can what, see why in New York, because yeah. you guys are walking yeah. everywhere. Yeah, for in sure. LA, I don't know. Name I've t- never had a random girl come up to me and say that mm. I have something. I know. We, we but kinda, if I would say it to a girl if I saw it, you know, yeah. I think there's a kind way yeah, of saying it. Like, sure. girl, like, I got you back. Yeah. yeah. You know, got a little something. Right. something. Yeah. You might want to check it out, you know? Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't think we do it as much as much. See, we got to work on the sorority, the sisterhood on the West Coast. In New York City, we are telling everybody, Yeah. you got something. I love that. Yeah. Good. But you know, like it's the regional differences. Um, I use um, 
Well, I guess I don't want to talk about brands, but I do track my period only because I would go to the mm -hmm. OBGYN and they always ask you that question, what was your last period? And I was like, I don't know. So I would go to the app so that I can know yeah. Um, yeah, what my last coming. period is. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask also, because this is like a thing that I go through for sure, is mm -hmm. like cramping and I, it is the worst. Like for me, it is deli Delibitating? Delibitating. Debilitating. 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 You know, yeah. I'm not the, I'm not the English girl over here. I've already learned. <laughs> it's like yeah. debilitating for me sometimes. I can't even stand up. Is that normal? No. That's wait, wait, when you have cramps normal. that are like that? Yeah, no. I mean, I'm just like in bed, like yeah. fetal position, like <laughs> rocking yeah. my head. Like so that there could, you know, chronic pelvic pain in general is, uh, it is a, it's kind of a hard condition to manage because there could be so many causes of it. Oh but goodness. I think if you're to, at the point where you're laid in the fetal position, you have to miss work, you're calling in during your cycle. I mean, none of that is normal. And oh. even though like sometimes our culture and sometimes people from way back in the past have always told us like, oh, heavy bleeding and heavy and really painful periods are normal, quote unquote normal. I mean, honestly, we don't need to live like that and that's yeah. not normal, so please get checked out, honey. Yeah. yeah. And don't okay, I'm gonna book an appointment with yes, you. Yes, that's right. perfect. Right. That's Dude, perfect. We're gonna talk about um, appointments later, but I used to um, <laughs> really be like, oh, you know, like I would just rush through my period. I'm like, you know what, I, yeah. I deserve, if I can, I would take the day off because I'm like, I, I just have to take care of myself. Yeah. So I just, yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna Yeah, do it. I remember there was one time like in yeah. high school mm -hmm. where I could, it was last period, not like my period, it was last period mm -hmm. in classes. And I ha I had to sit in the classroom for like an hour and my teacher was like, are you good? And I just couldn't even stand mm -hmm. up. And I remember like I slowly just made my way to the car with like all my textbooks. And I'm like, this is the worst no, pain yeah. ever. Yeah, yeah. No. that's. I that's she's looking normal. at me like, girl. I'm, I'm like, that's not normal. Right. I want to shout out Spain real quick. That gives out PTO. Who? Um, Spain, the country. Oh, do they, <laughs> they really? do. I know. Thank you. Thank you for bringing yeah, that. You're up. like, who's that? Spain? I'm like Spain. The country. They be giving out PTO over there, menstrual leave. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah they so do. we need to. I hope one day the government listens to our conversation and gives us menstrual leave too. I'd be super so, down for that. You know, yeah. What a speech. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. I didn't know it was a clap. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all the women know. I mean, it yeah. is hard out here, like, navigating everything and, like, the pressures, especially when you're younger. I couldn't, yeah. I mean, when I was younger, did you ever have, like, a leak through anywhere, like, in class or something like that? I'm, or even, like, at a partner's house? Has that I ever feel, happened? I, well, definitely at a partner's house. And I'm just going to be candid. He has some very expensive sheets, and those sheets were thrown in the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, because, and, and I don't want people to make you feel bad about it. It's just, like, I had, I'm sorry that your Egyptian cotton sheets got messed up, <laughs> but look at me. I imported from right. Egypt. Right, well, I ordered that in store. But yeah, yeah like I, I do get embarrassed when I'm at a partner's house yeah. and there is a situation, but that's how you know you have a good partner that he won't, he or she won't make you feel, he, she, or they will make you feel like weird for having something that's yeah, natural. There's sure. nothing I can do about it. I hate, like, sometimes when I was younger, I would date people like, you don't know when your period comes? No, I don't. You yeah. know, I didn't have a tracker back in the day, oh. but now I do. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, and, and yeah, everybody, you should you should be with someone who respect, like, it's like, you know, I love right. a partner that's like, what can I get for you? Go to the store for me, get it for me, have it in your house. Yeah. All of that ready uh, for yeah, me. Yeah, I love you that. Go, and, girl. And then I have another question. This is for more so like once we're mm -hmm. older mm -hmm. and yeah. we're going to start getting off of our period. Yeah. Like around what age should we expect something like that? Like, because, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm about to hit 30 end of this year. So I know yeah. I probably have, I mean, I don't even know. When does it start happening? No, so. I know it's no, no, no. she looked at me like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not years, you're, You got time, you got time. Yeah, um, but, usually like around like p between 45 and 50 is kind of when things kind of start happening and periods start changing. Yeah. So you still got a, a, a while, but I mean, yes, I mean, there actually is a condition where you can, something that we call premature ovarian mm, dysfunction really? or failure where your periods actually can start going away even as early as 40. So oh, wow. that would be a reason to get a, get evaluated too. And is it yeah. something you can reverse or is that just genetics? That sometimes ends up being genetics or some other medical condition. Yeah. So we've asked a lot of questions. I want to say around 50. Yeah, we've asked yeah. a lot. And I feel like there's still so much more. We have our fierce audience who yes. is watching right now. And I know you guys have a lot of questions as well. So we're just going to go ahead and get into them because a lot of these can be myths. So can a tampon stretch out your vagina? So no, that is definitely a myth. Okay, so the next question from our uh, fierce audience that they had submitted before mm -hmm. the episode is, is there a right vagina or vulva size? Actually, that's a really good question mm -hmm. because I have heard like 
Khloe Kardashian, like um, coming at Kim Kardashian, talking about like, oh, your your skims is, aren't, you know, it's not wide enough. It's not, oh. you know, for the women that have, you know, maybe a mm -hmm. little bit of a thicker mm -hmm. uh, vulva, mm -hmm. it's not like, um, how do you say it? Inclusive? It's not, in yeah, inclusive yeah. enough for that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's normal to have like all types of sizes or what would you say is like the normal? Yeah, I mean, for sure, you know, I mean, just, Sometimes our weight and genetic factors and and things like that can impact like the size of our, our of our vulva. So oh. it is it is very very important to realize that there's a variety of vulvas. And I mean yes, it is true. I think there are some brands that kind of tailor more towards different sizes and, and shapes, but definitely important to know that all, they're all unique and they're all different and beautiful. Yes, we all have beautiful vulvas. What color should our blood, should the blood be during your period? So usually I would say, well, first, OBGYNs don't really care or, or they don't really, aren't, don't get super concerned with like major color changes in general. It, we care more about how heavy and mm -hmm. how long your periods are lasting. And of course, if there's pain, but Overall, I think the color variation changes from like pink to like a deeper red, and then it kind of goes to like brownish, mm -hmm. and then it could even be like dark brown or black towards the end. Really? And it's just, it changes because as our, as we go through our period, the lining inside our uterus sheds, it's called endometrium. Mm. And so what happens is, is the longer that blood stays inside the uterus, it, it's a process called oxidation oh, happens, yeah. and then that's when the period color changes. Okay. Wow. Yeah. All right, so, and then the last question yes. from our fierce audience is, what does like a typical discharge look like? Yeah, so it's very normal, and I want everyone to realize like vaginal discharge is normal, okay? Mm -hmm. Like some people have more than, than others, and it just because you have a discharge doesn't necessarily mean it's an infection, right? Yeah. But I think mostly normal discharge is, is gonna be like clearish to like a light, kind of lightish um, white kind of color. So as long as you're seeing that and it's not like very abundant or it doesn't have an odor yeah. or anything where that has changed drastically from what you're used to, then then that's totally fine. Okay, so should have no odor, you said, right? Other, you know, it can have, like we were saying, like kind of like a maybe a sour or like a, a earthy odor or something along those lines, but nothing that smells bad, right? Yeah, and, like or no like a dead, dead animal. Not a dead yeah, animal. No dead animal. <laughs> yeah. And what, um, what causes discharge? Like, is it more so like if you're aroused and you're around somebody that like arouses you, or is it just like you're going about your day and it's just like a normal thing that happens? Yeah, it's partially what you said, but then it also is just like physiological, like your cervix, it has glands, there's glands in that area and they produce, it produces discharge. Is it, sorry, I'm asking so no, many yeah. questions. No. Is it, is it normal? Um, and I've heard this also that mm -hmm. vaginas are self-cleaning right mm -hmm. so okay so for instance you see like all those products that like you go down like a pharmacy oh yeah and yeah, it's yeah. like oh, you know yeah. this is you know smell like you know roses and daisies yeah. and butterflies or whatever Peonies. right <laughs> but i've also heard using those aren't that good for you right as so well. so the so the proper way to think about it is you do want you do want to clean your vulva the mm -hmm. external area because that has like you know, the sweat glands, the follicles, and that can obviously- Folliculitis. Folliculitis, there you go. <laughs> that can obviously lead to an odor or yeah. infection if you're not keeping that area clean. But yeah. you never wanna put like, your hand or or like a towel inside your vagina to clean it, right? Because Ooh, that is, is the self-cleaning yeah. organ is what we call it. That we have hundreds of bacteria in our vaginas and they actually keep our vagina acidic. So if you see a product that says, you know, make a pH balance or acidic, it'll make your vagina acidic. Well, actually, your vagina does that for free, okay? So you don't have to, free you don't have to pay I'm talking for about that. like douches, isn't that, I've never I, used one. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, even that. That's yeah. not good for you. Yeah, I would say no. Yeah. No. Wow. I'm not putting that up there. I've yeah. never done a douche. Yeah. You don't need to do all that. No, I'm not, I'm not playing with that. Like yeah. my shit, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I, like, yeah, I've been, I'm not. So even around yeah. like the, like, Underneath the first lips. Yeah, the. <laughs> no, sorry, I don't know. Yeah, no, the, See, uh, and I will put you on the spotlight. <laughs> I know. You can clean that area. Yeah, it's not externally. In. Exactly. It's not in. Right. And, okay. and when you're cleaning it too, you know, don't use like a super abrasive, like 
um, soap and make sure yeah. like you just use like your hand and like warm water. You don't need to like scrub it or anything because that actually can cause like micro tears and that can Ooh. lead to infections and things like okay. that. Okay, and I, if it wait, still smells after that, that, that means then you I need, need you. Go, then you need to come see me. Come see yeah. you. Yeah, I have one question that mm. may or may not be from our fierce audience. What do you think about vagina facials? There's like a thing where you do like Ooh, facials for your vagina. I've seen that. Yeah. I have, like you I have, said, okay, I have a friend who I'm does that. I'm not sure what My that, friend's I girlfriend heard of does that. that. Or like you steam it. Like you just go to like a place oh. and they steam it. No. <laughs> I was thinking, no. no. Don't do it. Cancel my appointment? Yeah, because what okay. if that kills your good bacteria? <laughs> What really? if that steam kills your good bacteria Especially. and then you and then the bad bacteria take over oh. and then you get an infection? There you go. Okay. So, so you don't want you don't want to mess with your your yeah. vaginal bacteria. So the minimal, the minimal better. the better. You see any signs? Go to go your to the, go local the doctor ABGN. Erica Montes. There you go. Yeah. In Texas. No, I'm in Arizona. And she's in but Arizona. But I'm from <laughs> Texas. Which, speaking of which, yeah, she's yeah. gonna give me tips. Yeah. I love it. Later. Well, we yeah. will be in that group chat after this episode. Yes, we with will. more questions. Questions. Absolutely. Yeah, I but like I, I genuinely do want to yeah. say this, like from the bottom of my heart. It's so nice yeah. sitting here talking to OPGYN. I yes. knew, I know I would have needed this when I was younger. I still need this as I a, a full grown adult. I, I was about to go today. get my vagina steamed. Were you? Please Absolutely. Do that, and now I'm not Good. anymore. Love Let it. me call really? them. You're going to cancel your appointment. <laughs> yeah. Cancel her appointment. Yeah. yeah, but it's so I true. I just thought like, I was supposed to do that. Like, imagine, no. like, because there's, I feel like there's also a lot of misinformation there out there. There is. And like a lot of myths, even when it comes to tampons. Yeah. Yes. and things like that totally. and like yeah. you know all those things that like latina moms tell us and things like that so it's just so nice yeah. to sit here and be being able to talk to you and like kind of get those questions yeah. and do it without shame and i think that's like right. the number one thing is like we should not be shameful of the body parts that yeah. we have and who we are and like what comes with all of that right. you know because yeah. i think also like in our society there is a lot of shaming of like oh like smelly this or like right. hair this or whatever that, that. and that it's like period normal. here yeah. like you know what? We have vaginas. They do things. It's a beautiful thing. What our bodies are capable yeah. of doing is incredible. They're self-cleaning. They're lovely. And that's my totally. little yeah. vagina vulva speech. Love it. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to everyone for tuning in. Thank you to Tampax <laughs> for sponsoring this episode of Girl, Let Me Tell You. Head on over to Tampax.com to learn more about your favorite tampon brand and find the product that's right for you. I'm Glorelis Mora, your favorite legendary comedian. You can follow me on Glorelis Mora. I'm Jessica Flores. You can follow me at Yo Jessica Flores. And I'm Dr. Erica Montes, and you can follow me at the.modern.muhead. Yeah. And make sure you're following Fears by Me Too on Instagram, all over social media. We'll see you on the next episode of Girl, Girl Let, Let Me, me Tell, tell you. you. Thank you.